What is your take on the theme for 2022, Break the Bias? I was really excited to hear that this year's theme was Break the Bias because I feel like we put a lot of our focus on giving advice to women, especially young women, on how to navigate systems that are biased against them and how to succeed in the world as it is. And that's great, we need to do that, but we also need to shift a little bit of that focus to examining the systems themselves, looking at them critically on how that bias exists and is baked into how we navigate um, the world. I'm excited that, that companies, individuals, governments are going to examine um, all of our programs, all of our hiring practices, the ways that we promote people to look at who are these systems designed to support? Who are they designed to raise up? Um, and, and how do people exist and succeed um, in the world as it is now? Do you think enough is being done by your industry to break the bias? No, I'm often the only woman in the room. Um, I'm often the only woman on panels. We need to look at why that is. And it's not solely because of what's happening in the workplace. Often it's about what's happening before people even get into the workplace. So we need to look at who is able to take time out of their working hours to learn about new emerging technology, who is able to quit their very stable job and take a risk, who is able to forego a salary or to you know, start their own business, and what supports, what systemic supports do we have right now that makes it possible for, for men to do that and not for everyone to do that. And sometimes it's it's about great reproductive health and choice. Sometimes it's about um, how we care for the elderly in our community. Sometimes it's about what what companies and ideas we're willing to invest in and to see as potentially innovative. There's a lot that we can do before people even hit the workplace to 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 break the bias in systems um, at a societal level, not just in an individual workplace. Which women have positively impacted your career? I have been very lucky to work with a lot of amazing women. Um, my very first manager actually gave me some great, some really great advice. Um, and it's unfortunate that the advice is true, but it is. Um, she saw that I really was trying to push boundaries and take new initiatives and do new things and, and do things differently than the way they were being done in, in the large business that I was working in at the time. And she told me that a lot of people are willing to help you, but no one has the bandwidth <laughs> to understand, to go seek you out and say, hey, you have potential. What do you need? How can I support you? No one can do that, right? So you need to take ownership of what you want to do and advocate for yourself. And that's true, right? I feel myself now on the other side of that saying, I wish I could help everyone. I wish I had the time to go identify who is amazing and support them. But, um, you know, people need to come to me and say, this is who I am. This is why I'm great. This is what I need. This is how you can help me. As someone young entering the workforce, I kind of thought I could just show up and be amazing and work really hard and it would work out. Um, and that wasn't the case. So taking the time to build the community, to build your relationships with people, to go advocate for what you're looking for, um, and to see how you can build mutually beneficial partnerships, relationships. It's how I've approached my career since then. What motivates you professionally? What motivates me professionally is problem solving. Um, it's actually one of my favorite things about working in any kind of emerging tech, specifically in Bitcoin, blockchain, Web3, NFTs, all that kind of stuff. When I come into work in the morning, there's a challenge that almost every day there's a challenge that I haven't solved before. Most days, it's a challenge that no one's ever solved before because no one's ever seen it before. And how fun is that? Um, it, it's you get to really know that what you are doing has an impact. It reverberates out from you. You know, I get to work directly with the government here, and I know that what we 
how I run my business has an impact for how the government is going to help other people run their businesses. That's amazing. Where else in the world do you get that? And in what other sector do you get that? Especially at my age in my, you know, early to mid career. It's an incredible place to be and it's emerging tech in general is a great place to work because it allows you to get there quickly because no one's ever done what you're doing before. What experience or skills are required in your job role? A lot of my job roles haven't been job roles that have existed before. I like to joke, um, I, I studied business in university. And when I'm talking to young people, one of the questions they ask me is like, should I study social media? Should I, you know, go to college and study? And I said, you know, if I had studied social media when I was in university, I would have been studying like MySpace and MSN Messenger. <laughs> like I wouldn't, Facebook was like barely a thing. Um, and we're so far past that now. Now. The thing that I love about my job is that, you know, it's impossible to know what's coming next. So the, the things that are important to do my job, and I think a lot of people's roles, are soft skills. The ability to take initiative and learn, the excitement to do that, being self-determined, having good judgment, taking the time to think through all the consequences of every decision. Any hard skill, like you can learn to write well, you can learn Excel, you can learn math, you can learn a lot of those really, really hard skills that make it possible for you to do your job. But I think the intrinsic skills, the who you are and the what you value um, are far more important in, in my role and, and in most people's jobs. Will you help break the bias?